is CNN Breaking News. And a warm welcome to our viewers in the United States and around the world. I'm Michael Holmes. Hello, and I'm Linda Kincaid. It is 1 a.m. on the U.S. East Coast. That's 6 a.m. in London. Thanks for being with us. Now, we start this hour with breaking news in the U.S. The U.S. Justice Department has just filed an appeal to reverse a U.S. District Court's judge's suspension of President Donald Trump's travel ban. Now, that appeal has been filed with the Ninth Circuit Court of Appeals, which will hear the case. The three judges who might hear that case were actually appointed separately by former presidents Jimmy Carter, George W. Bush and Barack Obama. CNN US Justice reporter Laura Jarrett is with us on the phone now from Washington. Laura, you've been going through this. Uh, tell us the main points of it. Well, Linda and Michael, this is a strongly worded legal filing. Just after midnight uh, here on the East Coast, the US Justice Department moved for what's called an emergency stay of the sweeping decision out of Seattle that temporarily halted the enforcement of President Trump's travel ban on a nationwide basis. And in this legal filing, the Justice Department says that blocking the travel ban, quote, harms the public and second guesses the president's national security judgment. The thrust of the argument here being made by the Justice Department are two different prongs. The first one is that the plaintiffs in the case, which were the case was brought by the Washington State Attorney General and Minnesota, they're saying the plaintiffs don't have standing to sue here. They haven't been harmed in a way that allows you to get into court. The second argument is that the president's authority in this area is sweeping and quite broad. And so he can basically do what he wants in this or in this area of immigration in an unreviewable way. The court doesn't have a, a authority to review him. So it's a pretty strongly worded legal filing we're seeing right now from the Justice Department. And the Justice Department is, of course, calling for it to be immediate. How quickly could it happen? Well, it's hard to say. It was just filed uh, less than an hour ago, and it's unclear yet whether the other side, Washington you know, State, will have an opportunity to respond. There is a motions panel set up in the Ninth Circuit Court of Appeals that can hear these types of cases by phone, and so they may do it very quickly, as early as tomorrow. You know, the, the, the other wording as we go, go through this, as you say, it, uh, it does talk about the, uh, the president's uh, national security judgment, second guesses the, the president's national security judgment, but um, also uh, says uh, that the ban contravenes the constitutional separation of powers. What, what, what does it mean by that? The idea there is that Congress gave the president the ability to do this, and by a, a different branch of government, in this case the, the judiciary branch, intervening in that authority, they're saying is improper. They're saying the president is able to do this because Congress let him do it. Well, <laughs> it certainly is uh, a fascinating uh, outcome. We, we will see whether... Uh... There is a decision tomorrow. Laura Jarrett, great to have you with us. Thanks so much. So it's only really just getting underway now, yeah. this fight one way or the other, and it could end up in the uh, Supreme Court, as we've been hearing. Troy Slayton joining us from Los Angeles, legal analyst, criminal defence attorney. Uh, I, I, I'm guessing you've had a quick read of uh, part of the language here or uh, heard uh, Laura there. Uh, what, what's, your, what's your take on this? Well, I'm a little bit surprised that it took the United States Justice Department this long to file this appeal. They should have had this ready to go a while ago, and that leads me to believe that there was some sort of disagreement within the Justice Department as to uh, what was going to be their basis for uh, asking for a stay of this temporary restraining order. What other options did they have? What options did the Justice Department had? I mean, really nothing. I mean, the, the president was saying, you need to do this. And the Justice Department, well, as far as they had several options as to what their legal argument was going to be. Uh, I don't think they really had a choice as to whether or not they were going to uh, file for this stay of the temporary restraining order.
Yeah, so, so what what you're saying is that you, you get the sense that they weren't really ready with a uh, an argument early enough. I mean, what do you make of the argument that they're saying that the uh, that the district court ruling barring enforcement of ban contravenes the constitutional separation of powers, harms the public by thwarting enforcement of an executive order uh, issued by the nation's elected representatives, uh, and so on? Is that a good argument? It is. I think that the two arguments that they made are very good, and they're really the most common argument that you would make a sort of in a situation like this. The first argument being whether or not the plaintiffs, being the, the state of Washington, even had standing to bring this, this type of lawsuit. And a standing for all the folks at home is really a, a threshold issue. It's whether you have a right to go to the courthouse steps to make this argument. So the Justice Department is saying that they're not even a proper party because they're not the individuals, they're not the, the entity that would be harmed by this. And the other argument is also a very strong one. It's true, the President of the United States has plenary power in this area. The United States Congress under the Constitution has the right, has the authority to regulate immigration. And they passed laws giving the President of the United States the authority to implement those laws with regard to the Customs and Border Protection, the uh, CBP. And it's interesting that the Department of Homeland Security very quickly reacted when the, uh, when the court in the Ninth Circuit uh, Judge Robarts uh, issued this temporary restraining order that the Department of Homeland Security said immediately, we're going to obey that. And now this just causes so much confusion into the entire system. But I think that the Ninth Circuit Court of Appeals is going to act very quickly to either implement a stay or sustain the restraining order. Uh, so what is the process now? Three judges from the Ninth Circuit will look at this argument. What considerations do they need to make? They need to decide whether or not uh, the plaintiffs here, the state of Washington, has a reasonable likelihood of success and whether or not they would be irreparably harmed if this temporary restraining order uh, stayed in place. And I think that... Uh, you know, looking at the precedent for the Ninth Circuit, some people in the legal community call it the Ninth Circus. Uh, it's a very <laughs> liberal uh, circuit. It's the most overturned by the United States Supreme Court. And two of the three judges were appointed by Democratic presidents. As you mentioned, Jimmy Carter and Barack Obama appointed two out of the three, the other being by uh, President uh, George uh, w. Bush. So, 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 I mean, if, so, if they are, one imagines that the confusion could just continue all the way to the Supreme Court. Would it, would it be a situation that the ban is implemented, uh, the, the court in Seattle gets it paused, so okay, everybody can come again. If the if the Ninth Circuit uh, upholds the the government side of things, the ban goes back on, and everyone has to stop again, and then. There's another appeal and it works its way up to the Supreme Court. People aren't going to know whether they should get on a plane or not. Is that fair? Well, I mean, of course it's not fair to those wanting to travel. Well, I mean, is that a fair, fair this, sort of statement of what's likely to happen? It's on, it's off, oh, it's yes, on, it's absolutely. off. Absolutely. The, but because this is a matter of such importance, the Ninth Circuit is going to act on this quickly. They know that the world is watching. So I imagine that we could get a decision uh, possibly uh, today, Super Bowl Sunday. And uh, the, the Ninth Circuit has procedures for dealing with emergency appeals like this, and they could come up with their decision any moment. Uh, and if whatever party doesn't like it, is likely to appeal it to the Supreme Court, and the Supreme Court could take it up rather quickly. And it could end up in a 4-4 tie. So that's going to yeah, be so interesting, isn't it? that's going to be a bit of a mess, too. <laughs> in that, so in that case, if it's a 4-4 tie, mm -hmm. the lower court decision stands. Right. Right. So the Seattle ruling at present would stand? Well, no. It, whatever the Ninth Circuit Court of Appeals right. decision is right. would stand. Wow. Troy, thank Troy, you so thanks much. Thanks for breaking that down Helping for us. Helping us understand that. Of course, we've got to assume that the justices won't be watching the Super Bowl and we'll be focused on, <laughs> on uh, this. Troy, yeah, Troy Slayton <laughs> in Los Angeles. Thanks so much. Thank you. Thank you.